The Dorkening and all affiliated shows are not intended for anyone under the age of 18. The following may contain discussions or scenes that have adult situations, graphic violence, nudity, strong sexual content, and graphic language. This show is intended for mature audiences only. Viewer discretion is advised. We are now live on Indie Creator Spotlight, powered by the Dorkening Podcast Network. We got an awesome show scheduled for you today. We're going to be talking to you with the people behind Go Don't Go, a new apocalyptic horror. And uh, with us today, as always, we have Patsy. Hello, everyone. I hope you are all uh, doing well, staying warm, and uh, avoiding uh, any uh, cataclysmic events in your uh, in your area. Exactly. Phil from Dark Discussions, how's it going, my friend? Uh, good, good. We got another three inches of snow uh, in the past three hours, so uh, hopefully that'll stop. But otherwise, I'm trying to keep warm. There we go. <laughs> uh, Patsy, would you like to introduce our awesome guests? Yes, as uh, Leo said, we are uh, welcoming the uh, driving forces between behind the uh, awesome new film, uh, Go, Don't Go. Uh, we have, uh, first up, the... Writer, director, and star, Mr. Alex Knapp. Alex, thank you for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. Great to be here. Excited. Awesome. And uh, we are also joined by uh, the love interest in the movie. Uh, she is uh, very good at building things. Uh, she is Ms. <laughs> Olivia Lucardi. Uh, yeah. I really hope I, I pronounced that right. You did. You did, yeah. You're right. Okay, excellent. Thank you for joining us as well. Uh, thank you. You know, we have a ton of questions, and uh, I do hope that some of them are ones that you guys have not been asked quite yet. So, yeah, we'll Let's see. I'm keeping track. All right, I figured you would. I saw your notepad and your and your pen earlier, like your big red right. marker. Uh, we do have the trailer also, so we'll, we'll be playing that as well. Uh, Alex, would you like to give a synopsis of Go Don't Go? Uh, yeah, sure. So uh, Go Don't Go follows um, uh, Adam, uh, who's a wallflower and happens to be the last person alive. Um, and it's kind of a film about the uh, his descent into madness and kind of the yearning for a lost love that was never allowed to blossom. Um, so it's kind of a post-apocalyptic uh, thriller that's really about a love story. And uh, when was this filmed? Uh, we filmed in the spring of 2018. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so a few years ago now, um, you know, these small indie movies take forever. And uh, the COVID filming actually helped. went, <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and then COVID happened and things kind of got a little slow uh, as far as distribution and whatnot. Um yeah, we filmed the, the movie a few years ago, and then we spent about a year in post-production. Uh, and then last year, we were on the festival circuit, um, doing a bunch of different festivals. Uh, and then COVID happened, things slowed down a little bit. And then the movie was released uh, in January, on January 12th, on VOD platforms everywhere. So it's here we are now. It's been a few years, but we're excited that it's out in the world. Uh, totally. And uh, for VOD, it's available on Amazon, Vudu, iTunes, Fandango, YouTube, and I'm assuming more as well. Uh, yeah. And watching, actually, I thought it, you might have filmed part of it during uh, COVID because uh, you would think this is the type of movie you would film nowadays. Yeah. Uh, it just kind of ended up being, um, I don't want to say a happy accident, but just kind of coincidental that, you know, um, both kind of the subject matter and the way we shot the movie is is kind of how you would maybe shoot a movie now and, and kind of topical for kind of the quarantined lifestyle that a, lot, that a lot of us have been living the last 10 or so months. Um, but yeah, we definitely shot it in, in you know, a scaled back uh, contained way. And, and I've talked to a few people um, on other shows kind of that it, it, it's just kind of 
ironic that in the way we kind of shot the film would be probably how you would have to shoot it in D currently. Um, just with a small crew and, and most of the crew was contained and living together in a bubble. And uh, we had a big property that we were shooting on about 500 acre property that we shot the majority of the film on that was super contained and we didn't have to kind of worry about the outside world. Um, so we're very prepared to make a movie right now if we had to. <laughs> uh, and, and you talk about the way it was shot, you know, it's, I, I don't want to give too much away, but as I'm watching it, it, it definitely makes you think as of, is this all in his own mind? Is everything actually happening? And it, it's, yeah, I had to talk to the guys afterwards. Cause I was like, I was totally lost, but Phil, <laughs> Phil explained it for me. <laughs> yeah. And it was good because the question that he asked was about a part of the movie at the very end that I had just literally just seen when the message popped up on my phone. And I was like, well, I'm glad I just saw this when you asked this question, <laughs> because otherwise you would have ruined the movie for me, Leo. Well, you shouldn't be uh, on, on Facebook or whatever you were on while you're watching a movie. Come on. Well, I was on everything because I told you I work from home. So I was watching the movie <laughs> right over there, a couple feet away. This is like my work area. And right there was is where the you, you, you're is. supposed to focus 100 percent on the film. Come on. What's Listen, going on that's here? right. Yeah, you probably missed a lot of really important stuff. That's well, right. we'll, we'll see. Because I think uh, I think I, I, I got a pretty good gist of what was going on. And. Uh, one of the first things that I noticed and one of the first things that I wanted to talk about was the rapid shifting of perspectives at the very beginning of the film. Uh, yeah. That was one of the things that I think kind of set the tone for the entire rest of the uh, the journey, we'll say, for Adam. Uh, the way he uh, kind of perceived the world around him, where it was ever shifting, ever changing, and slightly skewed because of the situation that in which he found himself so yeah can you elaborate yeah. on that a little bit and i don't know about you guys but i'm i'm okay with i guess some spoilers just just you know for us it's being a small movie i feel like you can't really uh it's okay to spoil it a little bit and talk and talk about it um uh as you know as long as it gets people interested in, in wanting to watch the movie I, I think especially a movie like ours is really kind of about the emotional tone and and the vibes and the feels and stuff so a lot of this sort of stuff you know i'm open to talking about um but uh but yeah i think um the opening kind of scene uh it starts with with adam at his uh at like a dining room table eating dinner and he's kind of uh you know having this kind of memory flashback um to a night at a bar where he first meets Kay, um olivia's character and uh and that kind of opening scene of their kind of like meet cute in a bar um was actually something i wrote kind of late into the script writing process it, it, that scene and, and their first meeting was something that wasn't really a part of the original script um in, until pretty later on um i felt like it was important to kind of see that moment and i thought it was interesting to kind of start the film on almost like a rom-com note and then kind of rip that away from you um i, I like the idea of kind of getting the audience comfortable and maybe feeling like it's a movie that they've seen uh and then you know letting you live in that for like seven minutes and then taking that away from you and saying actually this is that's not the movie you're watching you're watching this other movie um and you know i think it was also you know when we started talking i started talking to olivia about about acting in the film um it was kind of like okay like i need to make sure there's some really good scenes here if she's going to be in this and i want to start the movie with with her um and put her right front and center um so you know a lot of that um thought process went in there and then and then yeah like a lot of the we kind of wanted to set the tone at the beginning of the film too with a lot of the kind of flashback past present future drifting in and out of memories to know uh, that there's almost like not just one timeline yeah, mm -hmm. like multiple timelines and kind of strange things happening and, and strange editing things happening and kind of bizarre jump cuts and, and that's what I was sound, referring to. Sound cues and visual cues that kind of 
uh, right immediately tell tell you as a viewer that like, okay, there's more here. This is not just a, this isn't just going to go in a straight line. And um, there's, I'm not quite sure as a viewer where I am in this story. Am I mm-hmm. in the past? Am I in the present? Am I in the future? What am I seeing here? And we felt like if we could lay that groundwork early, um, then it would kind of prime the audience to be uh, more receptive to it as, as we went on and, and to kind of be able to build on that through the film. And I definitely think that that was uh, something that was done well because you get to see uh, little little cues as to exactly how long he's been around, uh, you know, doing this daily routine, you know, writing himself letters and, you know, to anything to feel some semblance of normality. But like some of the things you can tell that he's got this slow descent into, you know, this lonely depression because he's got, you know, not closing the car door at the beginning, like giving it like that half-hearted effort. Because even if you're, you know, really upset about something, you always, you know, you make sure your door is shut. You make sure the window is closed. Like the light is turned off when you leave the room. So that was, that to me was kind of like a very strong shot right there to show exactly yeah, what his, yeah. And what his mindset is. Um, one of the things that I, I I really liked was getting to see, you know, the rapid transition of like your guys' relationship, your character's relationship in the film, where like you're never really sure exactly what is going on, but you can tell that like certain time has passed, and like you you kind of highlight different relationship milestones, mm-hmm. um, you know, up to and including, you know whatever this cataclysm is that we don't find out, which I kind of like, you know, I like when it's not like, this is what happened. Aliens came and beamed everyone aboard, but Adam was in the bathroom at the time. So he didn't get taken. Like, you know, (laughs) yeah. You know, which is pretty close to what. (laughs) Well, did you know? (laughs) Yeah. Right. right. You're You're the first one right there. Yeah. Um, But I mean, I, I don't need to know what happened. I, cause I'm not, looking at this, it's not the story of this cataclysm. It's the story of how he is dealing with this. And, you know, what you were talking about, like the passage of time type thing. um, The first thing we see him doing is, you know, kind of swirling that, that, uh, that whiskey bottle, a whiskey glass around. And then we see it later on. And there's just this track that has been etched into the table after so many times. So, you know, we're also seeing like the, the, the light bulbs, like, I thought that was really cool. Like, there's no people left, but we have this light bulb graveyard. Like, I thought that was really cool. Uh, if I could ask a question um, to you folks, um, I, I was wondering, um, now we, we mentioned that Alex is a loner and, and a quiet person even prior to the apocalypse. And then um, Kay, when, when she comes in and... Uh, is set up, you know, they, they, they hit it off really well. The question I have is, was, was Adam okay with no, with the apocalypse happening as long as Kay was still with him? Not because he didn't, he, I guess it was evil or anything like that, but just for the fact that he didn't relate to people in general, except for Kay. Yeah, that's an interesting question. I think, um, that's, that's tough. I mean, I, I guess I never really thought about that. Um, I think definitely, you know, he's, he's a loner, he's shy, he's socially awkward. Um, this is kind of his a big kind of first big real adult relationship for him. And, and I think they were, when everything was kind of going down, they were kind of just trying to make their way out of it together. And I think, you know, obviously, uh, had had they made it out together and and had k kind of survived and they existed together um he definitely would have been happier um uh than being completely alone you know um but i definitely think in in their situation like they just didn't know what was going on you know no one really knew what was happening and and it's uh not necessarily that he had like a choice in the ma- in the matter there so um i mean he probably would have been happier obviously happier with, with her being there with him at the end. And, and, uh, um, but I don't know if I'm sure, you know, things would have been 
still pretty miserable had it been just the two of them and no one else. You know, maybe they would have figured something out together. But Kay was much more of a doer, so she probably would have uh, tried to actually figure out what the hell was going on and, and try to solve some solve some issues. Um, and that would have maybe presented some other challenges for Adam. Olivia, what do you think about that? I think that him being a loner kind of like so he's already a loner he meets Kay and then after then you know something happens and it's just us and we're fighting for survival <clears throat> but then you know him being that loner and being there with Kay and not wanting to lose the one person that you've really truly connected with I guess in the first time in a long time that it could be I don't know, that could be one of the reasons that he's sort of like trying to find her or get to their ending in a way because it's like that the idea of her is still the only thing he's latching on to of like that's still the only connection he really has is with Kay and um, <clears throat> Nori. Kyle. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so, you know, it's like, I don't know. I thought it was an interesting question. See, I, I nice think theory thought for it. based on, you know, uh, if I, you know, just my interpretation, you know, obviously I'm not telling you guys, you know, what's right or wrong, but based as a viewer, if I, if Phil had asked me that question as I'm watching it, I look at the scene where the two of you talk, talking about like one thing on a desert Island, what could you have? And he says, K, you know, and he, but he does it in an awkward way. Like, Oh, because I really like you, but it's like, yeah. oh, because you're good at building things and you're smart. You know, like he's got that awkwardness, but that's his way of basically saying, like, I would want you there because you're the only person that I would want to be with, aside from maybe Kyle. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there's a level I, of foreshadowing there for sure. Yeah. So and, I think. And, was, sorry, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, yeah, I guess if. Connecting those two dots makes Phil's question uh, make much more sense. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's, yeah, that's definitely um, a big part of it. Well, so, uh, we, oh, oh, go ahead, Leo. Sorry. I've been uh, actually, um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say we do have the trailer. I'm going to play this. Uh, so go, don't go. It's out now on VOD on Amazon, YouTube, Pandango, Voodoo, iTunes, and I'm sure more. After we play the trailer, when we come back, uh, we'll do Patsy's question. But I want to hear from Olivia what drew you to this part. And Phil, you've been raving about this movie for so long. I want to know what what do you love about this movie? So uh, here we go. Here's a trailer. Assuming I can find the right button uh, for a go, don't go. Adam. 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 They were there. They were there. And then they were gone. Adam. Yeah. Come on. Really? What? I I'm not making it up. I saw it. You saw it. believe me if I told you I didn't know how I got here I know you you got some tricks up your sleeve when I
idea of you is the only thing keeping me alive. The idea of me is slowly killing you. And that's Go, Don't Go. Like I said, it's available on VOD, Amazon, YouTube, Fandango, Voodoo, iTunes. And I got a bunch of information on the show notes as well. So, Olivia, what drew you to this part? So, um, Alex's girlfriend is a childhood friend of mine. And she reached out to me on Alex's behalf saying that he wrote a script and would love to talk to me about it. And... So I said, of course, and he sent it over and I read it and we sat and talked about it. And I just, besides the fact that the skeleton crew that he put together was fantastic. Um, and Frankie, who's the cinematographer, his work was great. Like, you know, his Instagram proved, kind of proved it. And then we talked about it and we just were on the same page about how we were feeling about it. And also something about it is just, I like films that really um, sit like in time and kind of play with that and just really give you this feeling of life and a clip of life and that natural, for some reason I wanna say in like impregnated moment, but you know where like you feel it all I don't know. It just seemed like it was a great project and I'm glad that I was a part of it because it ended up being amazing. Uh, can't agree more. Yeah. So, so Phil, I, I know every time we brought this up, you, you kept on raving about it. What, what do you love about this movie? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I actually just wrote this one paragraph to because I wanted to not screw it up when, as, as we were watching the trailer. Um, so as Patsy mentioned, his interpretation of what he sees as a viewer in the film makes the film a film that can be interpreted in many different ways, depending on each person's individual experience in life. Whether people are viewers do quote unquote performance of symbolism in their own lives as Adam does with the light bulbs, for example. Such things as visiting a gravestone is symb a symbolic gesture and Adam's life is full of so many different symbolic moments that he does intentionally. And just like visiting a grave, it keeps memories and one's personal virtues alive in a sense and done in an art house way, but also in a science fiction genre film, which is a fairly unique uh, way to do uh, I guess a drama. And so I, I felt that is what kind of um, makes it an interesting film because every person who sees it will get a different aspect of what they think Adam's existence is and what's in his mind based off of their own personal experiences. Bro, did or, you just write that really right during the trailer? I mean, that, that's a pretty <laughs> prolific paragraph to be writing out of nowhere. Phil's, Phil's <laughs> yeah, a good writer. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, I got this. Hold up, I'll tell you. <laughs> you want to know Thank how I looked at it? I will let you know. Hold on. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't want to, uh, uh, you know, if I just think about it, then when it's I'm on the spot, I'll forget everything. So I said, I'll just write it all down. So uh, Very well. Thank you. <laughs> Phil's talented. Until you review shit. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, Phil, I'll, I'll totally agree with you watching this movie, you know, and I absolutely loved it as well, but you know me, I'm an idiot. So I was, no, you're not. <laughs> you know, as I'm watching this, I, my mind was going everywhere. You know, is it a figment of his imagination? Is he schizophrenic? Is it really happening? You know, uh, is it ghosts? You know, it, it's just everything was flowing through my mind. And, and I love movies like this that they keep you guessing right until the end. And even at the end, I'm, I, you, you can interpret it different ways. At least I hope you can. If you can't, then I, I'm still an idiot. <laughs> I don't think you're an idiot, but I will absolutely say that there were uh, there were aesthetic choices made in certain, let's call them cosmetics, that if you paid attention to the overall aesthetic of what was going on in the film, you could tell what was real and what was not real. Interesting. Well, I think that... Um... And oh shit, I'm about to lose it all. Hold on. 
I think something about the film, though, that with a lot of things and being able to interpret it in your own ways and everything else is this idea of the unknown. You don't know what happened. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know the end of it all. So you kind of have this fear of the unknown, which everyone can put their own interpretations within it. Um, talking about the movie, go, don't go, Sharon. Um, anyway, sorry, saw that. Thought I'd answer. Thank you for that. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> perfectly fine. But, um, you know, it's that feeling of unknowing and aesthetic choices and everything else. But I think Alex leaving it sort of this open ended thing that it does. We don't know. Or maybe he does. I don't know. We're, I well, have an idea in my head. We all have yeah, ideas know. in the Italy, so Yeah, well, let me Alex add to what, either. <laughs> let, let, let me add to what Olivia just uh, said, which is, um, and it's the, specifically the, the scene that Leo and, and Patsy were talking about earlier. And what it is is um, when he, meaning Adam, sees UK or Olivia yeah. um, at the end of the film, the question is, are is Kay really there or is it a figment of imagination or is it something even more than that? And um, I even uh, asked you uh, once, Alex, that maybe- Well, the girl at the end, Phil, the girl at the end is a different actress. No, 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 I don't mean, I don't mean- so in, the, the in the shed. I don't mean the redhead. Right. I'm talking about the shed, the shed, yeah, right. Uh, so what, what I'm saying is, is that he's meaning Adam still could have saw Kay as, in a sense, because I mean, one interpretation that that I we talked about in a podcast I did for Halloween Boutique Psychotronic Reviews was that um, it could be even like like a spiritual thing, and and she's there spiritually, or it could just be maybe it's his mother. You know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See, I was I was referring specifically to a choice that was made uh, in certain scenes. She's got green nail polish and other yes. scenes this guys picking red. up on stuff yeah actually, i don't think anyone's really brought that up in any of the interviews Me? i told you i paid attention <laughs> <laughs> Mine yeah, doing some other work but you noticed something no one else did really yeah there's there's a few uh easter egg things like that um and just to kind of cover this whole thing i, I think <clears throat> that was definitely a, a part of our intention was uh you know some of my favorite movies are films that when they're done, you want to talk to your friends about them for hours because things aren't, weren't just told to you totally. Mm -hmm. And there's a debate there and there's discussion there and there's room for interpretation and there's room for you uh, as a viewer to participate a little bit in how, what, what are the answers to the story? Um, and so that was definitely something we wanted to do. And, and, um, so I'm glad that that came across, you know, it definitely is like feeling even some of the things Leo said about, is he schizophrenic? Is he crazy? Is this Pat, you know, is this future? I think as long as people can, um, as long as that doesn't frustrate people and some people it, that does frustrate them. Um, and, and, you know, I'm, I'm aware of that, that, you know, this film isn't absolutely for everybody. And some of those things of not giving you all the answers will be frustrating. Um, but you know, our hope is that people who have all these things racing through their heads, that they can find what feels right to them and what connects them to the story. Um, and that can kind of carry them through, you know, whatever that kind of emotional connection, uh, that they decide upon for us is like totally valid. Um, and yeah, like whatever that unknown kind of, is like for you to put yourself in yeah, mm -hmm. whatever you know, the missing piece you know, all I'm here to do is like lay all these breadcrumbs out and give you all these puzzle pieces. And if you can put the puzzle together um, and it looks one way, but it looks a different way to someone else, like that's okay. Um, and, and, uh, and so that, that was something that we were trying to do. And, and for some people, you know, again, that can be frustrating, but um, it seems like you guys kind of in, enjoyed that. And I know for myself, mm -hmm. those are movies that I like um, and it allows you to kind of, dissect them and talk about them and, you know, have these kinds of discussions about them um, because there are things up for interpretation, you know? Is yeah, it great that you made a movie that people are sitting here and discussing? Yeah, I mean, yeah. hey. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I was thinking, you know, that, that it was uh, a sen sensory experience 
rather than an actual corporal uh, appearance of Here K. You know? we go. And and that's where where what I, I'm thinking he was doing, which is and and that was his way of uh, be able to I guess move on. You know, so. So and, did we explain yeah. the nail polish? Did we explain it? Can we? Are we allowed to? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like so, yeah. The nail polish so, that Patsy talked about. Yeah, go for so it. So green, basically, a way to know it's a memory and, a, and an illusion of K is green is she's a real person in its memory. Red is when she's an illusion, and that's her saying stop. Kind of don't for go. him, like stop. <laughs> yeah, the whole yeah. go, don't go. Oh. Right. It's all right here. No, I'm just kidding. And there's yeah, there's I, in green, my really bad nail polish now, but <laughs> green and uh, green and red symbolism throughout the whole film. Um, I mean, like for example, one thing, one little Easter egg there with green and red is like his morning routine every day of like that montage of him doing all these things. Green so the first few few times you see it as a green toothbrush, and then right at the end, before we get to the shack scene, we cut to the toothbrush sitting there, and it's a red toothbrush. Um, so things kind of change from green to red throughout the film, and her nail polish changes green to red, and there's kind of some other kind of color aesthetic green to red stuff um, throughout the film, which, yeah, just kind of echoes that go, don't go, the check, the X, yeah. the 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 different paint yeah. he was using and the map and and all that sort of stuff. But I just love those subtleties kinda... in there. Mm -hmm. in that yeah, film. there's a lot of them. I get, I give you a thumbs up for that one because uh, I I I should have got that with do, go don't go green and red you know stop and go and I didn't I didn't even catch that that's pretty well, awesome. that's, and Phil, I think that's, slacking Phil know, that's, know, a, good, that's a sign here, of you know? good storytelling where you're so engrossed in the story that you're not able to kind of you know Realize look at all these up weird continuity. Things. It was really a continuity mess up. Then we just had to go with it. I'm just kidding. Yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. that's what that's what I thought you were going to say, Alex. That it was Some of it has had the accident. I remember there there would be times on set where it'd be like, okay, hey, we're shooting this scene. Like, oh my god, what's your nail polish color? Like, what are we going to do? <laughs> and like, we're just oh my like, god, pile it do on we have top. nail polish? Like, quickly switch your nail polish. Like, we have to shoot this in five minutes. I remember there was like one time where I was like. I can hide my hands. I'm like, like, yeah, just like, don't shoot her hands. Like, no, don't shoot her hands. No, 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 we'll we'll just... fake it. I'll get a hand model. <laughs> yeah, I'll just hold everything like this. Like... <laughs> well, and that's the thing that I like about, you know, this type of film is you only know as much as Adam knows. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. you don't know all this extra. Like, you're not walking by a newspaper that's like, oh, yeah. you know, war declared. Or, you know, there's no... Um, you know, news broadcasts, spouting exposition, like you see in so many movies, like you don't need that. Like that's not necessary. Everything you're doing, you know, you know, the old Hollywood adage, show, don't tell, you know, there's so many movies yeah. where it's, this is what's happening. I feel happy right now. Like use your, you know, your ability to tell the story. And you guys, I think the chemistry that you have between the two of you, you definitely have, um, uh, that ability to tell the story uh, of who Kay and Adam are and how their relationship is progressing, you know, just through the conversations that you're having. And what I really like about the way this was shot is it's like, you know, the, the scene that we were referencing at the beginning when, you know, Adam's outside, had a cigarette and Kay's just like, you want to put that out and close your tab. And it's like, you know, there's that unspoken, like, yeah, let's head back to my place type of vibe. <laughs> there was like not, a hidden wink there. Like. But she's not like, hey, do you want to go have intercourse? Because I would like to have intercourse. Like, you don't need to do that. Like, I mean, you that's guys what you usually to... ask at the bar, but he was yeah. telling me to say this. So. Right. Oh, yeah, I had to tell her to tell <laughs> It was down. so unrealistic. <laughs> but you guys were, like I'm saying, like, you guys were able to convey this, you know, this this progression of the relationship without being overly expositive like you guys did that with your talent in your craft of acting and i really appreciate movies like that well, and thank I, you very I think much for that. yeah thank you i think one thing that carries it through too is even though you know olivia uh isn't in a million scenes she is ever present throughout the mm -hmm. film mm -hmm. and i think that that's like a big testament to her performance and like how strong she is when she's on screen is like she's even the scenes, the moments in the film where you maybe don't see her character for 20 minutes, 
she's kind of lingering over the film all the time. It's a looming you presence. Permeate. I, I, I yeah. said permeate, I think, when I was talking about yeah. the film earlier. Yeah. And you're aware of her presence and her character all the time. And um, that's just kind of a testament to, to Olivia and like the economical nature of her presence. It's like you, you, she can be in only 10 scenes and it's like, she's in the entire movie and you're never, you're kind of thinking about her all the time. Um, so it's almost like that she's helps. the main protagonist. Yeah. So that definitely helped, um, uh, which is just totally a testament to her and, and her ability for sure. Thank you. <laughs> well, I'm I, like, I, okay, I, guys. <laughs> I, I have a question for Alex. Did you find there was uh, a lot of conflict between, say, the director, the writer, and the lead actor? Mm. Like, were they going back and forth a lot, or yeah. were they pretty much always on the same page? Let me tell you, all three of those guys were assholes. Okay, <laughs> and hard to work with. Uh, I can cover. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, it was definitely, uh, unorthodox, I guess. Um, but you know, in certain ways it was, it was super helpful. And in other ways, it just definitely necessitated like a level of adding more resources to certain things. I mean, I think, um, writing it definitely helped me play Adam, um, just because I knew the material so well. And I kind of knew the uh emotional beats so well um and uh and then obviously writing it and, and directing it it's like i knew i could kind of visualize the whole movie while i was writing it and i wrote it in a way that i knew i could shoot it and i wrote it with i wrote it in kind of an unorthodox way it's not like a super traditional script it's very much like a lot of kind of prosy poetic exposition and a lot of visual language, which is not super traditional for, for a screenplay. Um, but I knew I was directing it. So I threw that all in there and kind of made it real, a lot of flourishes and things like that. And then on set, it was like, I just had to kind of put a bunch of talented people around me um, and make sure that, you know, those people that were, when I was in front of the camera and my DP, Frankie Toriano, who I've worked with for 10 years now was behind the camera and uh, my producer, Max Gardner, and, and uh, you know, other people that were on set, uh, producer Derek Brown, and, and uh, you know, that they knew what was in my head. We had talked about it. We went through months and months of pre-production, and, and I could trust their opinion. Um, uh, you know, if somebody, we shot a take, and they said we needed to do another take, I I would say, no, go fuck yourself. We're not. I'm I'll be in my trailer. Lunch. I'll be in my trailer. Um, <laughs> You know, we would, you know, we would shoot another take. And, and um, so that was a lot of it was just kind of surrounding yourself with other talented filmmakers who are kind of all directors in their own right. Um, and they trust. I mean, I think that's yeah. for any sort of like being in as many positions as you were. It's so important to find, as you're saying, yeah, like a trusting yeah. crew that you can give your like creative ideas to and know that they're going to execute them properly while you're in front of the camera yeah, and stuff like that. Totally. And then also, you know, again, <laughs> casting Olivia, it's like a no brainer, you know, it's like I, she could just carry me through those scenes. Um, so I, you know, just wouldn't have to, uh, it's like everyone's just watching her anyway. So I can just stand here and just, you know, say whatever, just read the lines off the, off the cue cards or whatever. Um, <laughs> so, now, uh, Alex, uh, was was this film specifically written for you to direct, or, or were you trying to sell it as a screenplay at first? Yeah, I wrote it. I wrote it for me to direct, um, more even more so than to play Adam. I think originally, um, I definitely wrote it as something I wanted to shoot um, and wanted to direct, and that was kind of part of, you know, I, I think. I definitely like shared the script around with a lot of people in the industry and got a lot of really, really positive feedback from it. Um, but you know, I had a lot of people say like, Hey, if you're trying to sell this to someone, like you need to format this in a much more like rigid standard way. Cause it is very like, like I said, it's like a lot of kind of visual flourishes and like, I'm talking about camera movements and like, I'm talking about things like that. And, you know, it's so um, interesting though. Cause I think that was one of the reasons that I did like it. Yeah, and that's, it, that, the flourishments make you really put engaged. you in the uh, yeah. yeah in the idea of like 
I'm really seeing the world that you're creating here and the moments, the sitting moments that I fell in yeah. love with, you know, and it's like, yeah, it was kind of interesting how that worked because like I had a lot of people telling me that like that's not the standard screenwriting format, yeah, which like I know more technical and yeah, which I know like I went to college for screenwriting. I've written very <laughs> standard rigid scripts, you know, where like the writer isn't really supposed to put their like creative stamp on it in a way, you know, you're mm -hmm. supposed to leave those things to the director and whatnot. But I also, on the other hand, like the way I wrote the script is why everyone got involved and like why Olivia wanted to do it and why we got funding and why. So in a way, uh, it's like, yeah, yeah, it was, just, it was written the way it was supposed to be written. So, um, but yeah, I wrote it to direct it. Um, didn't necessarily know the whole time I was going to act in it, and that just kind of ended up being the the way we went with it. So, so in other words, the flourishes in the screenplay were almost like uh, those those pictures that that like some directors do to show all right, the door Story opens boarding. this way. Yes, yeah, thank you. That's what I'm looking for. You it know, almost sounds like that. Is that, is no, that right? Or even, like, uh, or even like, you know, like one thing I'll, I would do in the script is I would actually like put the song in. So like at the, the kind of um, scene at the end with the shack, um, I had in the script, I said like, this song starts playing and like these lyrics, you're hearing these lyrics and like I would write the lyrics out almost as like they were dialogue of another character. And like, that's like a big no, no, because like in a normal situation, like picking a song for a scene is for the director to do and you have to get the music licensing and you also you never know if you're going to, yeah, you never know if you can get that song and blah, blah, blah. But like with me, it's like, I'm going to put the song in the script. I'm going to tell you what it is. I want you to look it up on YouTube. I want you to listen to it while you're reading the scene. Um, and you had so a playlist, the, didn't you? Yeah, had like a whole Spotify playlist yeah. and a lot of the songs were on there. Because you like sent me I a Spotify playlist. In the script and and so I definitely wrote it, yeah, in a way that uh, it was like almost like a shooting script for me. It was like camera directions and, and uh, you know, little like emotional things that you would maybe would be like for an actor to interpret or or, or a director to interpret, I would say like, you know, Adam sees this and he's feeling this, like he sees this and he feels this inside of himself, which, uh, you know, a lot of times that, that sort of stuff isn't in like a more traditional screenplay. Makes sense. Olivia, how much uh, did you improvise and how much did you go right off the script? Like, did you guys play off each other a little more or was this what we saw, what was in the um, script? Well, you know, I obviously he wrote most of my lines, um, <laughs> like 99% of them. Um, I think the only time that there was some sort, I mean, we first off did just bounce off each other really well, but the beginning bar scenes is basically where I was ad living at any point if it was there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would say too, like, you know, some, a lot of the, some of the stuff with Olivia is like not super dialogue heavy. It's like action heavy. Like, you know, some of the flashbacks of her building the shack, which is just like, you know, in the script, it's like a two sentence. It's just like, we see K building shack montage. Yeah. And so it's like, that's the sort of thing where it's like, that's all her, like every look and every movement and every action is, is, is all her. And, and yeah, definitely in the bar, it was really about like trying to make it organic and like, you know, we'd have a line written and it'd be like, hey, does this feel natural? Like if it doesn't feel natural, just change it. Like, what would you mm -hmm. say in this situation? You know, knowing Which you, you were so like good and welcoming with that from like an actor's standpoint of being like, what if we, and you were like, yeah, if it feels yeah, like natural you know, and best for you, go for it. And that definitely comes from like being an actor, like, uh you know it's one thing if like you are doing shakespeare or to kill a mockingbird or something and it's like okay yeah like this is you're here to do the words bro like yeah um but with something like this it's like what i want is just a natural performance so it's like if you're gonna say something to somebody as long as you can get the idea of what i'm trying to get across to like push this conversation where it needs to go then like say whatever is 
natural and like how how you would say if you were this person mm -hmm. and if the, you know if what i've written doesn't come out right then just like fix it mm -hmm. like um, oh i want to have intercourse with you do you want to yeah that was right? written and it was like why don't you say this <laughs> yeah like that's, nat that's how that's how humans talk right yeah <laughs> human <laughs> yeah Oh. Yeah. I definitely think you guys had a had had some good chemistry, and there was mm -hmm. um, like you could definitely tell that the characters uh, cared deeply for each other. Like they had their their little specific like hand holding thing that they did, you know, and the you know resting your head on the shoulder, and you know all these like little these little things that you know as you you know if you're in a committed relationship for any period of time like you and your partner develop like these little idiosyncrasies that you're not going to see from someone else like these little like these little bits of uh, public displays of affection and i think the fact that you guys you know this is this movie is 90 minutes and you guys don't have a ton of screen time together and the screen time that you do have where you're you know where you're uh, kind of playing off each other with that type of intimacy is even less of a percentage of the runtime, but you're still able to get it across, I think is a testament to, uh, you know, not only how the script was written, but like the acting ability that you guys brought to it. And I know I mentioned that already, but like this was something else that I noticed that I really like kind of honed in on. So it's like my wife and I, we have like little stupid things that we do. And, you know, you guys, if I were to, to take a guess at how long Adam and Kay were together, I would say, between six months to a year would be my guess uh, because they moved in together and, you know, they had these little quirks that kind of played off of each other. Um, and I think it helps that you guys knew each other prior to this. Um, yeah. And we or, didn't know each other totally, but you know, we kind of yeah. both knew of each other. Um, you know, okay. my, my girlfriend was childhood friends with her. So it's like Olivia has kind of been in my orbit for a while and we have a ton of mutual friends. Um, and like people that this we is what finally brought us together as like yeah. meeting and, and so each I, other. I think a big part of that was like knowing that we had a bunch of these mutual friends. It's like, well, obviously we're going to get along because I have a bunch of friends that are her friends and she has yeah. a bunch of friends that are my <laughs> friends and we all like each other. So like we're, we're going to be friends. And, uh, and then, yeah, you know, I think a lot of it was just kind of organic. And, and for me, it was like, you know, in the script, it's, I didn't want to like overdo it. You know, it's like, there's not, there isn't like a sex scene. There isn't like a makeout scene. There isn't like these things because I think there is like a more, Purity I don't know. About it, almost. Yeah. There's something more genuine about it because it's not trying to kind of shove it down your throat. And it is it's not like gratuitous in any sort of way. It's just the natural, like. It's yeah. like what I was talking with the over ex exposition, like you don't need mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just kind of about being with them in these kind of tender moments. And like, if we pick and chose those spots correctly, um, like those kind of key moments in their relationship and, and kind of just had these key visuals with them together in these key moments kind of sprinkled throughout um then like yeah that would be that would be enough you know mm -hmm. um and that was kind of our kind of our thought process i didn't want to overdo it and and try to like you know try to force it or something just let it let it live in these kind of beautiful little mini moments um i, I have a question about uh uh an action in the film that um uh, we see a number of times and, and basically he has trip wires and, and things of that nature, little things that he sets up. And though uh, it, we, we know bad things or something may be out in the dark, we, we really don't know. But I was curious if he put those up because he was worried more about random people or if he was worried about something in the dark or was he putting them up um, just to feel, quote unquote, alive, I guess. Uh, yeah, good question. I actually was re-listening to the discussion you had with with your other guys on the on the uh, the Dark Discussions podcast, and remember you guys talking about that and um, wanting to answer that question for you. So, uh, yeah, I think he puts the traps up um, because he is paranoid that there may be other people out there still, and so then the question becomes: Why is the last person alive? paranoid that there's other people wouldn't that be good 
and it just kind of goes to still like who Adam is and what his priorities are and and also just kind of losing losing his own grip on reality um, of like, okay, well, at this point, I've been alone for two years. So now if there are people out there, they're probably not good. And they're not necessarily people I want to deal with. The walking um, dead te did teach us that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to say that. The so, longer you like survive, the road, the the road or something. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, the yeah. road is another great example. You know, it's kind of like, well, now that I'm the only one around, like if other people do show up, like, that's probably going to be a problem. Like it's probably mm -hmm. not going to be good. What are they um, going to do to survive? What are they going to yeah. do to me? They're right. going to take my stuff. And, and, and that's yeah. the reason why when we d discussed in, in the Halloween boutique, the spinoff of dark discussions, the, that hope probably was watching him maybe for a long time before she finally decides to uh, make an appearance maybe because yeah, people a, are, are bad in the post-apocalypse. There's a level of that. Yeah. And you guys even talked about, he stumbles upon this campfire that's still smoldering mm -hmm. and it freaks him out. And there's this kind of push and pull through the first half of the film of like, uh, not only for Adam, but also for the audience of like, are there other people out there? So like weird things are happening to him. He's noticing weird things. He thinks he's seeing weird things. Things are confusing him. And at the same time, the audience is kind of like, is there someone there? Like, wait a minute, that door just opened. Or like, wait a minute, how did that get there? Or like, who's doing this? And so playing with that push and pull of like, you're in the same situation that Adam's in where like, he maybe thinks there's other people out there. And then when it kind of gets revealed to the audience that like, no, 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 like this guy's really alone and a lot of the shit's in his head is also the same time that it's kind of, he has to come to terms with that as well. And that tripwire moment um, when he goes over his own tripwire, uh, kind of plays to that, where it's like, this is the threshold in which his paranoia is now becoming a detriment to his health, right? And how the things that he's doing are going to, are like physically impacting him. And like, he's set up tripwires everywhere in the forest. And if he's not looking at his map every two seconds, like he may walk over one. And then he goes back to like his little safe room and looks at the map and kind of says like, yeah, there are tripwires here, bro. Like, and, uh, and then it's like, well, why is he putting all these tripwires up on the mountain that he's also trying to get to? Um, so there's like all these kind of like psychological, like the guy is not well. And, uh, and these are the, the kind of moments that display that. Um, but it, it's kind of being revealed to the audience at the same time that it's being revealed to him. Um, yeah. You know, it would be a pretty damning indictment on yourself if, you know, I, you'd hope that someone who was slipping into paranoia and madness, if they really did something messed physically to themselves that almost killed them, that would be kind of an eye opening moment for them. Like, holy shit, I'm doing this to myself. Uh, I'm going to kill my, I'm going to blow myself up out here you know, thinking I can do all this shit, you know, and just being paranoid and setting all these booby traps or whatever. Um, so there was a, a level of that as well. Um, but I also liked your kind of interpretation and, and, and one of your other co-hosts saying, you know, that he's maybe setting traps for whatever's out there. And, and I think that's true too. You know, it's like he is setting traps for whatever's out there. He doesn't really know what's, what's out there. See, I, I, I saw it as um, it was a kind of con kind of a combination of what Phil was saying about, you know, the other girl kind of watching him. And as she's watching his pattern, she knows, OK, he doesn't go into any of these places that are marked with red X's. I can hang out in these red X places and kind of keep an eye on him. And the combination of his, you know, fragile psyche that is giving him these auditory hallucinations to kind of cope with his loneliness coupled with the fact that she's, you know, she tries to make contact with him multiple times, but kind of chickens out at the last second, mm. every single time, uh, you know, only kind of fuels his, his, uh, his madness and his sense of dread and foreboding. And I think she's doing more harm than good up until the end of, uh, of the Interesting. film. That's how I looked at it. I, that's very good. I like that. <laughs> uh, I can't say that I that's I wish I had put more of that in the film. Uh well, I think you know, there's I, a lot of it, which is why I came yeah. I came to that conclusion. 
Yeah. I think that, yeah, that end character is definitely like, I think it plays on so many different levels and it, and, and, mm -hmm. and for some people it will kind of throw everything into question and be like, Oh my God, was she, was, is this a person who's been around this whole time and kind of been all these things that he was seeing and is his paranoia of someone being out there justified? Um, and, and, and then also just all the other kind of metaphorical things that that character at the end represents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of the the quote: um, uh, "Only sane men question their sanity. Madmen are always completely assured of their rationality." The fact that yeah. he kept questioning himself is what led me to think that he hasn't quite lost his mind. He's on his way, but uh, I do have one other question. And so after he he uh, triggers the tripwire and the branch lands on his leg. Mm. He reaches and finds a hammer. So I'm curious as to how the hammer helped him get out from under. Like, was he? Did he use it as like a fulcrum and kind of? Yes. Yeah. There's a up? whole like we shot like a 10 minute scene of that. I had this idea where it was like, uh, it was like okay, he's this tree's gonna fall on his leg, and just to be like a real like uh, you know auteur filmmaker. You're going to have to spend like 15 minutes with this guy as he tries to get his leg untrapped from this tree. And you're going to be there for like 10 minutes. And it's going to be DiCaprio like would do it. agonizing and excruciating <laughs> and like boring and like serene. And he's going to get like tired and not be able to get his leg out. And, and finally, after like 10 minutes of sitting there, and it's going to be like the most boring <laughs> scene you've ever seen in your life because that's art, you know? And uh, so we shot that, and then in the edit, we're like, "Yeah, no, we're this is this is way too long." And uh, yeah, I don't know who you think you are, Terrence Malick or whatever. Uh, that's gotta go. So yeah, he grabs the hammer and he just gets himself out of there. But yeah, I was, that <laughs> I was looking at that and I was like, "Okay, this is gonna go one of a couple ways. He's gonna kind of wedge that under, use it as yeah. leverage to kind of slide yep. his foot out. He's gonna yep. use it." To dig maybe or he's gonna Combo saw style it and smash his foot uh, so he can pull it out one of yeah. those three things <laughs> it was more I'm of like a what you did yeah full it was like a fulcrum and a digging to get the foot out but uh yeah we ended up just kind of you know sometimes you're in the edit and and uh you know, best laid plans and, and your intentions of doing one thing and, and pulling one thing off. And then you get in there and you're like, you know what? Like, we have some really nice momentum right now. And as cool as it would be to sit with this guy for 10 minutes as he tries to untrap his leg, do we really need it? Does it really help us? Is it really is it really telling us something in the story that we don't know? Or, or is it really sending us on the path of where we want to go? Um, and, I think it could uh, work. Like, it could have worked. I, I, I think what you did was fine. It's yeah. four hours I, long. Right. I, well, no, no. I mean, you could have actually put it in and just had more flashbacks of Kay and you, to, uh, Adam, together or something. And and, and it would have worked that way. But obviously, yeah. if it's just 10 minutes of watching them yeah. do it, that that would be hey, true art house. You know? Art house <laughs> films, baby. If you hadn't filmed it, though, I think you would have you would have regretted not filming yeah. it. Mm -hmm. That's the thing. You just use some of that stuff. And there were some scenes like that, you know, like... Um, one of the longer takes in the film is the scene after that where he's walking home and he kind of walks down the road and we hear all the voicemails mm -hmm. that he's left himself. Which and I love. And yeah. people don't really realize that, that that walk itself is like two and a half, three minutes long, um, which is very long in kind of film terms without sure. you know a long one take shot. Yeah, that's three um, pages of a screenplay right there. Yeah. <laughs> so that's or one fair. sentence, yeah. you know, one sentence that can be three minutes. Yes, you never that's know. True you know? Too, yeah. He walks down the road. Uh, yeah. That that scene there really, really nudged it to me that you, you might have been schizophrenic because you tell yourself, you know, just go through the shop and just pick it up. You don't have to go through line. You don't have to wait there. Just pick it up and go. You know, and, and I thought you were giving instructions to yourself, you know, and that that's where it you know, it was really teetering for me. And uh, Patsy, you mentioned uh, auditory hallucinations. Uh, also, the grocery store, you know, you keep on hearing the ding of the, like, the the scanner. And uh, that that really threw me off as well. See, that, that whole thing in the grocery store towards the end, though, was really, like, 
you could feel him kind of losing his grip, you know, dropping the wine bottle. Then, you know, the almost desperate, like clean up on aisle one, like he knows no one's going to answer, but that hope and that desperation is still there. And then the attempt to open the door and it's like, why don't you just pull, or, 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 pull or the just door a, open? I, I still think it was just symbolic uh, moments that he was trying to do to make himself feel alive and has nothing to do with him going nuts. But that was my interpretation. See, I, like, I th and yeah. I saw it completely different. Like, right, right, that's, exactly, yeah. that's a, a, a sign of a well-told story. Like we're looking at this, we're looking at the exact same thing and we're getting two totally different, but neither one, neither one of us is like, no, you're wrong. But right, it's like, right. you could be right. Maybe I'm wrong. Right, like, right, right. Yeah. And I think you're all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here to give you the official stamp of approval that you're all right. Well, you, you know, what is right is this movie is simply amazing. That, mm. that, that's one thing we need Thank to you. say. And uh, definitely, you know, we urge everybody to check out Go, Don't Go. It's out on VOD, uh, Amazon, YouTube, Fandango, Vutu, iTunes, just about everywhere. Uh, is this getting a physical media release? Because a lot of us like to collect the physical media. Yeah, on Amazon, you can buy a Blu-ray or a DVD. Nice. Um, and uh, I think at this point, I think they printed like, I want to say, 20 to 50 and i think the blu-rays it says like on amazon temporarily out of stock but if you order it it tells them to print more mm -hmm. basically nice. um so uh so yeah on amazon you can get a blu-ray or a dvd physical copy which is really cool to know. totally I don't something know. i there, didn't even know and, and is there, uh, <laughs> and is there yeah. extras or anything on on those discs for for folks who like all the extras and stuff i don't think there is unfortunately um you know Part of that sort of stuff is just up to the distribution company and and there were some assets that we had built and that it's kind of up to them what they throw on there and what they don't throw on there and some stuff we didn't finish till it was too late um so i don't think there are any any you know extra extra stuff on there necessarily but you know you can always reach out to me and i can i'll send you the script and i'll send you the send you some behind the scenes pictures or whatever you want. I'll send you my, the, I'll sign my the, uh, underwear and you can <laughs> do whatever you want. I want the 10 minute digging the foot out scene. Yeah, I'll also, send you the wrong footage. <laughs> ex the extended cut of like, you know, him brushing his teeth and flossing and getting ready for the day. There's a lot of that. You know, making breakfast. Uh, I know we are running on time and I apologize for that, uh, but I just want to make sure we covered a couple things before we let you go. Um, so this here, uh, Alex is, um, according to IMDB and you know, IMDB is always right. Uh, but this is the first movie that you've directed, correct? Uh, correct. Yeah. The first feature. Okay. So, so absolutely knocking it out of park at, for this one. What's Thank next you. on your list? Oh man. Uh, well, the, yeah, I'm in, I'm in development on another, uh, another script, another project, um, called California city which is kind of like a action thriller um, that takes place in the desert uh, and is about uh, a person waking up out of the desert, um, like buried alive and they're covered in strange markings and they kind of make their way to a little ghost town and uh, they don't know who they are and they don't know what's going on, but they're strangely connected to this town and the people in it and things are not what they seem. Um, is this the one that you were telling me about? I think so. I can't remember. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And then, I, I, I uh, want to ask you about that. Actually, I want to find that place. And then I say I you lit up when you. <laughs> <laughs> it's been something I've been kicking around for a while. And then I'm in development on another project um, with an old producer colleague of mine. Um, uh, a movie called Night of Your Life, which was actually a movie that almost got off the ground before we did to Go Don't Go. Uh, but it kind of didn't. And then now that we've done go to go, it looks like this is something that we can actually get made. Um, so that's called night of your life. And that's something that I will be producing and acting in, but not directing. Um, my, uh, buddy Vincent Morano, um, who's been in the industry for years and years and years, um, will be directing that one. Um, so that's something we're, we're working on. So hopefully one of those two things happen here in the next little while and we'll see. Very cool. That's all well, exciting. 
Yeah. Uh, when, when you have, uh, you know, when you're working on that, if you want to come back and tell us more about of it, course. we'd love to have you on, you know, help spread the word as best as we can. And Olivia, so, I mean, like we just said in the beginning, you know, I absolutely loved you in, in Orange is New Blacks. You're also you. uh, in Deuce, you know, two awesome shows. And uh, so what's next on your project? List? Right now I am back to the casting couch. I'm kidding. Um <laughs> But I'm not like I mean I'm I am but you know I'm I, I'm I'm auditioning I'm just waiting for the next project to come and hopefully something will soon awesome. you know fine things are finally picking back up after you know lockdown yeah. and quarantine yeah. and rampant and Olivia, COVID. Olivia had a big year of releases you had like three or I four did. movies released back to back to back she had Go Don't Go Paint The Violent Femmes the what. Or what was the fa the uh, one with the Phantoms, Vienna and the Phantoms. I'm like, Vienna the Phantoms. The violent violent. Violent. <laughs> it's like a punk Kappa, rock band. <laughs> yeah, that's that's yeah. right. It is it's a punk rock band. And then Kappa Kappa Die. So you, Olivia had four movies come out in like the span of like three weeks, all uh, yeah. back to back. It was out of nowhere and unrealizing because you know, like we were saying earlier, indie movies take a long time to come out. Vienna and the Phantoms. We yeah. shot six years, six years yeah. ago. Yeah. So that coming out was very um, lackluster. So, so yeah, sometimes you shoot things in different years and then they all come out oh, together yeah. in the same month. Yeah, like, oh, so it's like the Vienna movie, I mean, I got the text from one of the actresses from it and they were like, wait, did it actually come out? And I was like, no, it's out. Like, I'm watching it right yeah, now. She's like, it. no fucking way. And I was like, no, it's really out. It's out. <laughs> it's finally out. We made a movie together. Yay. Like, well, oh, yeah. don't feel bad about that because last year we covered two movies that were filmed in 1980 that came out last year. Yeah, Both yeah. 1980. Yeah. <laughs> one was eight. Yeah, one was 87. Yeah, and the other was what 85. Yeah, the long haul. Yeah, yeah that is. no, 83 because Gri Grizzly Two that took forever okay. to come out. Oh, yeah, yeah. and but then the one, the one in 87 though was was crazy because they they lost the. The archives of the film and they found it and they had it finished by skywalker sound so yeah and they like, did the 4k restoration by yeah. paramount because they both happened to get wow. jobs later on working for these companies yeah. nice yeah so that's it has, amazing though oh yeah. it, it's uh you know another inc incredible indie film is uh you know because it has the 80s feel but you know the polish yeah. of of movies today yeah that's awesome yeah, that was, it was an uh, 80s take on 50s sci-fi yeah, it was uh, nice. Siegfried's brain. The night it? they saved Siegfried's brain, house yeah. sitter. Yep. Nice. Check that out. Yeah, totally. It's totally. it's really good. What's that on? That's uh, on Amazon. That's on. Uh, you can get the physical copies on Amazon. Uh, it's streaming pretty much. Uh, not streaming, but VOD pretty much everywhere. Okay, there we go. You know, we might as well let the world know. Plug it. Yeah. Siegfried's brain. The night they lost Siegfried's brain. Like they saved Siegfried's brain. Oh, there we go. <laughs> they saved it. Yeah, they didn't lose it. They saved Wait. it. Yeah. Uh, well, along with that, we we definitely urge everybody to check out Go Don't Go. Like we said, it's available on Amazon, YouTube, Fandango, Voodoo, just about everywhere. iTunes even. Uh, so uh, just uh, do a just buy the physical copy. Yeah. Well, yeah, physical copy on Amazon. Yeah. Uh, we have information in the show notes down below or up above if you just want to be lazy and just click. Uh, very easy for you to find. So uh, we will start with Olivia. Where do you like people interacting and following you on social media? You can find me uh, mostly on Instagram, which is at Luchardi, L-U-C-H-A-R-D-I-I. -I. I'm Olivia Lucardi. People mess up my name a lot. I owned it. So that's my Instagram. Awesome. And that's the best place to find me. I'm on Twitter as well under the same thing, but I don't really check it at all. Yeah, Twitter Twitter is yeah. a vile, evil place. <laughs> it is. It's a cesspool of hate. Uh, how about you, Alex? <laughs> where, where do you like interacting with your family? Uh, yeah, Instagram uh, is probably the number one, which I'm just at Alex Knapp, uh, K N A P P, and uh, and then also uh, just redid my website, which has a bunch of work on it and has some. Yeah, it's nice. I, I checked it out today. It's nice. Oh, thanks. Yeah. So <laughs> the website is uh, alex-nap.com. Um, has a bunch of work on it and has uh, California City and Night of Your Life. Some upcoming projects has a little some blurbs about those things as well. So uh, yeah, 
It doesn't have any pictures of you, though, really. I was I was uh, looking yeah. for, for to put in you know the liner notes uh, of my yeah. episodes and stuff, and there was none. Yeah. So. Yeah, you know. Uh, Snag them from know. IMDb. Screenshots. That's what I, I don't know. Screenshots. <laughs> yeah. Right, yeah, right. There you know. go. There you go. I feel Congrats. like weird putting pictures of myself. I don't know. It's gonna <laughs> imagine me trying to edit a movie of myself. It's. Difficult. You've seen yourself too much for, for yeah. The, I'm like that guy needs put to some uh, vanity away. quotes in the in the 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 DVD liner like oh the most handsome actor I've ever directed. Yeah, exactly, I was expecting yeah. selfies. <laughs> Come on, man. I'll put the screenshot of me in the shower on the. Website. You're, you're on you're on Instagram, so you must have a lot of selfies. I don't know. Uh, you mentioned uh, IMDb. Actually, they made it dip more difficult lately to snag pictures from it, which is a pain in yeah. The you have to use a snippet or or you know yeah uh, just take a screen. Screenshot. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's that's what I do. Take a yeah. screenshot. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. Uh Phil, how about you, sir? Uh, yes, um, you can find us at uh, or me at uh, darkdiscussions.com. Uh it's a news network, uh daily updates, 30 different podcasts, including uh Halloween Boutique Psychotronic Reviews, which has two episodes about Go Don't Go, uh volume 15 and volume 17. One of them is a two-hour critique and review of the film, and the other is uh, interviews with both uh, Alex and Olivia. Awesome. Patsy. You can find me uh, on, let's see, uh, Throwdown Thursday is the main show, but you can also find me here on Indie Creator Spotlight. You can find me on The Loudest Sports Show uh, every Friday, although this week it was a couple days late because of various issues and things. Um, but yeah, every Thursday you can find me on uh, Throwdown Thursday, every Monday, and occasionally on Fridays you can find me here. Uh, you can find all of the shows on the Dorkening Network, as you can see right behind me here. Uh, you can also find me in the next couple of months on the streaming service Pivot, playing the the adorable puppet Will Mouse on the other side of Midnight. Uh and you can follow all of our shenanigans and everything that we do on throwdownthursdaypodcast.com. It's all the latest uh, articles and episodes and links to our social media. And uh, I did follow both of you guys on social media. Uh, yeah, I saw that. Thank you. Make sure you're following Alex Snap and not Alexis Snap. Yeah, it's, you know, it's going to be a hard road for me to make a name for myself in this industry, man. <laughs> she's already got a leg up and she's a good looking and talented woman. And it's going to, it's going to, going to get a, have to make a lot of movies to catch her up, catch up on her. Alex, maybe it's Alex is nap. I don't know. Um, it's Alexis nap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me. <laughs> but uh, yeah, make sure you live, you know, you go and follow these fine folks as well. Thank you. Uh, totally agree. For me, just Google Leo Pond. You find a bunch of stuff. Could be true, could be not. I'm not going to say which is which, but it's all you'll true. find oh. out. It, I know it is all true. Uh, you'll find out that I run a little thing called the Dorkening Podcast Network. We got over 30 shows on a network. You can head on over to thedorkening.com for more information. Uh, and uh, yeah, for for uh, just check out Go Don't Go. Uh, we are working on a special project. Keep your ears peeled for that. We're doing a 50th anniversary for the electric company. And uh, we got some cool guests for that plan. And, uh, you know, Go Don't Go. Check it out. We'll catch you guys later. Bye. Thanks, Thanks guys. guys.